Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay and analyze the gameplay between two great players in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. The map is Stone Hero, the matchup is Rohan against Isengard, good against evil. Before further ado, let's get it started. At the bottom side of the map we have the Red Isengard player Mergin and he's facing against the great Rohan player John Wick at the top side. It's a nice matchup Rohan against Isengard, but let's hope for Mergen that this is not the real John Wick, otherwise Mergen doesn't stand a chance. This matchup should be favoring the Rohan faction early on because he will have the chance to recruit many peasants from those farms inside, but also from the farms outside of his base, which can create constant pressure on Isengard's player Mergen. That's why he has to start with the Uruk pit, and has to recruit many 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 Urukai to deal with the peasants from the Rohan player John Wick. Luckily for the Isengard player, the Urukai are the strongest and the fastest swordsmen in Battle for Middle Earth 1. So they should be easily able to win the 1v1 situation and with the Warchan from the spellbook he can even win 1 vs 3 against those peasants, no big deal. And once again, running away from the Urukai is not an option guys, that's not gonna be possible because he will outrun you and he will catch you and he will kill you. <laughs> Alright, he's gonna send one of his Urukai now to the top side using the right side in order to catch some peasants, I'm assuming. And he will potentially be able to see, to see those peasants. And once again, he doesn't even need to use Warchan in a one on one situation. That's not necessary. At the very same time, John Wick, the Rohan player, was able to capture this farm at the bottom left side offensively. And like mentioned before, the Isengard player is just gonna get some more and more Urukai on the field 24 7. During all this time, the Hobbit Mary was also purchasing this farm at the top right side on the map to Nero. And right now, the Rohan player has 4 farms under his control, which is a lot. This is the reason why he's gonna get a lot of money. And he will also be able to get the food bonus, which is gonna make those Rohirrim from the Sable later on cheaper. And you can get them for 420, that's the cheapest. Depends of course how many farms you have. 6 is the maximum. Even if you have more than 6, you won't get any more benefits. 6 plus farms is gonna give you a 30% discount. Which is gonna make those Rohirrim once again cost you only 420 resources. Alright, he's gonna now use the Hobbit Mary to kill some workers around this side. That's very nice against Isengard or against Mordor. Because the Lumber Mills are unique in terms of resource generation. And if you can kill these workers just like he's gonna do now, then you can deny so much money from your opponent. So you don't have to kill the mill all the time. Killing the some workers is always nice as well against evil factions like Isengard, but also against Mordor. And once again, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, they have no chance. That's a 2v1 situation by the way, they were already able to kill one peasant around this side. That's the second battalion they are now killing, which is, which can actually show you now how strong the Urukai are in battle for Middle Earth 1. Which makes also sense, because the peasants they cost only 100, but the Urukai they cost 200 instead. Nice one here from Mary, he's not gonna stop but move downstairs immediately to kill some more workers. During all this time, uh, the Isengard player is playing quite offensively, he will be able to take down this farm slowly but surely. The Rohan player now has to stable up on the field and the first Rohirrim is already on his way. Alright, he needs to be careful with the Urukai, he was gonna lose them unfortunately to the troll. But the troll now will be able to kill this farm right after. From the lair at the bottom left side. Oh, he might be able to get the troll away from the farm by using these peasants and I think that's gonna be also the case. That's a very smart move here from John Wick and I like to see that. And once again, Mary was doing a nice job, I think he was killing around 15 builders just like that, which is very nice and delaying so much money from the Isengard player Mergen, which is necessary because Isengard but also Mordor factions, the evil factions generally in Battle for Middle Earth 1 are scaling very hard if, they give, if you give them the time to, they need and if they get a lot of money uncontested. But killing the workers was stealing so much time. That's the base from the Rohan, uh, from the Isengard player, sorry. And that's the base from the Rohan player, guys. He's building now the well. He's gonna get some more Rohirrim on the field. He's gonna use them early on to kill those um, meals the Isengard player was able to kill from uh, or purchase at the top side of the map. And also this farm is going down next. Very well done here from um, Mergen. He's trying to keep the fight at the top side. And once again, Isengard now needs some time. He's gonna use Industry 
And that's something you can always do. You can use industry on a furnace which is just building up. And once it's built up, you can still have industry available on this furnace as you can see. Pretty nice and effective. In this matchup, uh, Rohan is gonna try to skip the heal and go for the Alvin Allies summon instead. Alvin Allies is gonna be necessary if you wanna be able to deal with the pikemen. Because that's what's gonna happen now. Isengard's player is gonna spam a lot of pikemen to counter your Rohirrim. Yes, you can, you know, of course, purchase or recruit some peasants, which are quite cost efficient counter unit. But he will use the Berserkers as a counter unit to your peasants, to, you know, in order to deal with them. And Berserker is just one shotting them at this point. But I like the fact that Smurgeon is actually keeping up the pressure at the top side of the map. This is giving him the time he needs to build now his base up to full. And he's not going for the armory just yet. And also on the map to Nero, there are many, many outposts to outposts on each side. So Isengard's player now can purchase this outpost at the bottom right side. Make some extra furnaces around, around this area in order to boost his resource income, which is always nice. Isengard will... Oh, oh, oh he's running it down. All right, all right. He was losing one of the Rohirrim, unfortunately. And that's gonna hurt him big time. That's gonna hurt him big time. Because losing Rohirrim in this matchup is gonna put you really behind. And it's really, very hard if Isengard gets the money he needs. To win those extended fights. And very nice micro here. And once again, the infantry units from the Isengard faction are the most mobile. And there is no reason, or no way in this case, to run away from them. They will always be outrunning you. And they will always be catching you. The mill on the backside is going to be taken down. The armor is coming up now. It's almost 100%. I'm assuming he might purchase the heavy armor first. When it comes to buy upgrades on the Rohirrim, you can see there are the, the prices are different. The forge blades going to cost you 350. The heavy armor only 250. While the horseman shield costs you 350. And the banner carrier up upgrade is going to cost you 300. So it's a little bit different than the Gondor faction. And also Rohan is the only faction with only one type of resource building. So imagine uh, Isengard, you can build um, furnaces, you can build slaughterhouses, you can also build mills, right? Mordor can do the same. Gondor has blacksmiths and a farm. And Rohan has only farm, which also works like a production building, because you can use this farm to get some extra units on the field, which is the power from the Rohan faction in the FME one. Yes, the peasants are falling off later on big time, but early on they can actually do so much work for you, trust me on that one, guys. Alright, Lourdes is getting recruited now from Mergen, the Isengard's play at the bottom right side. During all this time, the Berserker is gonna get trampled down. Rohan is in a safe spot. He's now buying the heavy armor after purchasing the Forge Blades first. Uh, he has the power points he needs for the Alvin Allies summon. There is an outpost from the Isengard's play at the top right side. He might now use the Alvin Allies there. That's gonna be also the case. And that's gonna be helpful because this way he can now easily take down this outpost. You can see the pikes are dying very quickly against the elves. And that's the reason why in this matchup, regardless if you are playing Gonza or Rohan, you want to skip your uh, heal after picking Alvin Wood or the draft with the Rohan faction and go for the Alvin allies instantly. Elves are very important and very impactful in this matchup, big time. Trust me on that one, guys. I mean, the idea behind this, I think what Mergen is trying to do is he want to invest. I mean, he's kind of wasting money now, right? He's buying an outpost. He knows he can't keep alive. This outpost is going to be definitely taken down. There is no way he can protect this outpost. But with that, what he's doing now, he's able to buy some time and keep the opponent units busy. And by the way, also Rohan player was able to creep this work layer at the bottom left side before. And that's why this farm is under his control. Look how many power points he was able to gain. There are still some creeps left. Uh, as the goblin layer, which is getting now secured by the Rohan player John Wick. The work layer or the goblin layer, sorry, at the bottom right side is also remaining on the field. And we have also the troll layer around the top left side, but also at the bottom right corner. And that's it. All the other creeps are secured by the Rohan player. He was, I think, able to get them all so far. There is also one more work layer at the bottom side, uh, close to the side of the... Oh, oh, he's trampling them down. And that's something we can always do. Because if you don't switch your pikemen to the porcupine formation, and you get trampled down like this from an upgraded Rohirrim battalion, you might lose them just like that, as you can see. That's why it's so important to switch uh, to the porcupine formation in time. Very important. And now the Rohirrim are going to be also able to creep this goblin lay at the bottom right side. He was also able to pick up the heal from the spellbook now of the Rohan faction. He's getting some more and more Rohirrim on the field. Demolishing the armory after purchasing all the upgrades which you can always do. Because you can still purchase the upgrades right after. There is no need of keeping the armory in your base 
It's gonna be a waste of spot. You can use that for a farm instead to get some more money. Alright, this is also under control from the Isengard's play emergent as well as the outpost at the bottom right side. That's a very risky move and I don't like to see that at all. Like, important buildings like Armory, Warg Pit, Uruk Pit, you wanna build them actually in your main castle. That's the first rush, alright. Oh, but he's gonna lose one of the Rohirrim because they have no horseman shields, guys. Horseman shields is gonna increase your durability big time against arrows. And it's gonna make it much, much easier to rush the base from the evil factions like Isengard, but also Mordor. This outpost has been taken down. He's gonna buy it one more time. I mean, he's just wasting money now, investing 600 resources for no reason, just to be able to buy some time. I think that's the entire idea behind that. This uh, Spearman have also the heavy armor purchase. Does he have Warchant? Yes, he does. And with the Warchant, he might be able to win this fight against the spear, uh, against the peasants. They have also heavy armor plus Benekeri upgrade. The Spike Man, that's the reason why they will be able to win this fight now. But in the meantime, the Urukpit is getting sniped down before it's up on the field by the Rohirrim. This is also a level 4 battalion, so the more levels in BFM you want, the much more stronger your units are gonna get. But Isengard's player at least is buying so much time with this one pikeman and the outpost around the top left side. During all this time, he will also be able to destroy the Rohan outpost at the top right side, which is very nice. Lourdes is on the field, Lourdes is level 3 now. Level 5 is gonna unlock his leadership to make the Nervia allied units around Lourdes deal 60% more damage, which is quite impactful in every stage of the game. And Isengard needs that, because on the paper, Rohan has more leadership. The only leadership besides Lourdes, uh, what Isengard has early on, is the Warchan, and that's it. Warchan is a nice leadership, but it's gonna be disappearing after a couple of seconds, you know? While Theodin, for example, is gonna replace the Warchan 24-7, as long as he's on the field. The Rohan units around Theodin are gonna have always the 50% damage and armor buff. And also Aragorn is giving you straight 50% damage leadership, this together is gonna make the Rohan units deal 100% more damage, 50% tankier, and also increase their combat experience by double. 100% combat experience means your units are gonna be able to level up twice as quickly. The outpost from the Isengard's play at the bottom left side has been taken down. Isengard is in a safe spot right now. Uh, I'm assuming he was able to purchase all the upgrades from the armory. Lord is dancing around, but you know, in this stage of the game, I think it's very important to keep at least one pikeman with the Lords. Yes, Lourdes has, a, has some great uh, self-peel with the carnage ability, which is gonna make him deal 100% more damage, and he's also gonna attack way faster. Elvin Allies is gonna be used once again now, this time offensively at the bottom left side to kill some pikemen, and that's the proof. Look how strong elves are against the Isengard faction when it comes to kill this pikemen in no time. Very well done here from, uh, from John Wick. The Rohan play at the top side. He's now going for the archer range, guys, in order to purchase the fighter upgrade from the level 2. He has to first of all recruit uh, 3 of these archers. Because unlike in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King, you can't buy these upgrades with money. You need to get experience with the building by recruiting multiple units, okay? Very important to keep this in mind. And I'm assuming he's not gonna go for archers afterwards. The reason why he wants to get the fighter upgrade purchased is because of the Rohirrim archers. Rohan is known for, for the mobility part. And it's the only faction that is able to recruit archers on horse. Which is a huge power spike for the Rohan faction. Because this way, this uh, spearman, in this case those Urukai pikeman units from Isengard's player Mergen, can't be effective anymore. Since they are very weak against archers slash fire. So Rohan player should be easily able to deal with them, no big deal. And also, Theodine is gonna be recruited at some point of the game. To just boost the damage from this Rohirrim archers even further. Alright, uh, I mean, the bright side for the Isengard player, I think he has a nice protected base. Look at the furnaces now, they are hitting level 3. Furnaces, alongside with the blacksmiths, are the tankiest resource buildings in the game. 6000 HP they got with level 3, guys, and they act like a tower as well. So look how many towers he will have very soon in his base. Once these furnaces are also hitting level 3, every building around this side, beside the Uruk pit, is gonna act like a tower. Which is gonna make it very hard for the, for the Rohan player to achieve something only with sending one or two Rohirrim. And he was also buying fire upgrade, fire upgrade sorry, on this uh, Yeoman Archers. Lourdes has to be careful, he's taking damage for free. Has to disengage now. There are no units around this top left side though. But he, uh, he is getting some pikemen. Look how fast they are dying guys. Do you see that? They are getting one-shotted by these archers in no time. Horse Blitz is getting purchased next, Elven Allies is on cooldown for the Rohan player. 
Devastation was actually picked and used from the Isengard's player. That's gonna give him around 1,500 resources instantly. He has a lot of money. He might now save for Saruman, who costs 5,000 in BFME 1. But the heroes like Saruman, Gunsalf, and Aragorn, they are always coming out of the on the field by level, you know, by being level 5. Unlike in Rise of the Witch King or BFME 2. And heroes like Boromir and Faramir are coming out level 3. You don't have to level them up from level 1 to level 5. With that being said, for example, Saruman will have every single ability unlocked immediately when he comes out. He will have a Wizard Plus, Fireball, a Warm Tongue, and also the Speechcraft. Level 4 unlocked. Level 5 is going to unlock, unlock his leadership once again. Industry is available for the Isengard player. Nice defense here. He's getting some elves actually recruited from the level 2 archer range. That's interesting. I was expecting him to go for Rohir matches instead. Trample is incoming. Lords can be put in inside the tower if necessary. This tower is um, it's a tower you can always put units inside. But also you can put lords inside your own outpost. But make sure to switch to the bow mod before that. Now he's level 5, leadership is unlocked and the outpost is in a safe spot. He's going now for the siege works. He wanna go for the siege as soon as possible. But dark comes the end and I is summoned. Look at this crossbowman inside the tower. They are hitting very very hard. His ends are very vulnerable against fire. Lourdes, if he stays close to this tower, by the way, guys, he will give also leadership to the units inside the tower. This way, these archers inside the tower are gonna deal 60% more damage. Lourdes might be in trouble. He has to get the spikeman close to Lourdes. Carnage is being used. The ants are going to war, but Lourdes is not gonna make it out of uh, alive from this one. Lourdes has been taken down. Two of the ants is down. Uh, only two are remaining. This one is burning. He's gonna, you know, burn until he dies. The Zeta has been taken down right after. There are some crossbow men he needs to be careful with. Elven Elias is going to be used once again. During all this time, uh, Rohan player was also purchasing some uh, upgraded uh, peasant battalions and actually pressuring the bottom right outpost. The armory is still on the field. He was able to buy all the upgrades, so losing this one is not going to matter anymore. And the outpost has been taken down. I mean, it's not the worst thing for Isengard because he was forcing the Rohan player to actually use both ends, but also elves for defensive summon. That means they're gonna have a long cooldown now until he will be able to use them once again. John Wick, the Rohan player at the top side, has now 4 power points collected afterwards, so he's only 6 power points away from unlocking his Army of the Dead. The which is, by the way, game changing, game changing in BFMU 1. Like Balrog, for example. Balrog can kill one shot the entire base from Rohan or Gonzo, while Army of the Dead can kill every unit and every hero in a couple of seconds. The outpost has been taken down, but uh, Isengard's player will be able to defend himself. And he is refusing to get some Warcriders on the field. In those kind of situations, it would be so nice to recruit some uh, Warcriders, sorry. Because you can use them to kill the enemy peasants in no time. And look at the pressure, that's real. The elves are still remaining on the field, but Rohan is finally being able now to push him back. They have Saruman on the field now at the top right outpost offensively. He is also reviving his lords, who was level 5 has leadership and he's gonna get some more units from this area he's gonna put some crossbowmen inside the um, tower here for defense he was also buying fire on this crossbowmen to increase their dps this outpost is gonna be taken down i'm assuming there are some pikemen the elves are gone now that means they can now re-engage on this uh, on this rohirrim and they are forced to retreat just like that very well done here from isengard's player keeping this outpost at the bottom left side protected and alive saruman is chasing down this rohirrim arches and once again, Fireball is a semi-range ability you can always use from a very safe distance. And Saruman, alongside with Gunsalf, is, you know, they are very impactful in the game. There comes the Fireball, just like that, killing two units and forcing the Rohirrim archers to retreat. Smart move here from Merchant as well, he's putting some crossbowmen inside the tower and using the map in his favor. Very well done. This outpost is gonna be the targets now, but here's some archers with fire upgrade inside that one. Look how much damage they are able to deal. That might be a bad commitment, because once the pikemen are dead, Juan can actually engage with the Rohirrim, and that's gonna be also the case. But the Urukai are still dealing a lot of damage. He's gonna even use Warchant for that one. He will be able to take down this outpost, but is it really worth it to use Warchant for that? I don't know, and I don't think so, because he will be easily able to buy this one anyway, for 600 resources only. I mean, you know, he was kind of buying some time, as I'm assuming, right? Because during all this time, he's building an army worthy of Moro at the top right side. Yes, you know, as you can see, Saruman, Lord, side by side. They have both leadership. Saruman is giving you also additional 30% armor and 100% combat experience. With that being said, your units are able to level up way, way faster. 
getting some Urukai now for harassment and refusing to recruit any war riders so far. And Rohan player is only 3 power points away from the army of the dead, while Isengard's player is still 16 power points away from his own Balrog. So he's far far away in terms of power points and the reason- Oh! The reason for that, he needs to be careful against the pikemen, you don't want to trample them. Heal is being used now to keep this units alive and the Rohirrim matches once again are hitting like an absolute track. Rohan will be able to save his level 7 Rohirrim, very important to keep those highly leveled Rohirrim alive. And so far, he was not recruiting any hero from the Citadel just yet, guys. I mean, Theodin is reliable, cost-efficient, strong, impactful hero. So he will need him at some point, definitely. Uh, and also, the Isengard's player didn't go for the Freezing Rain. That means he has no way of nullifying the enemy leadership. He was going for the Field of Fires, which is going to increase the money, income from the Slammer Mills by 100%, which is going to make Isengard very, very rich, as long as he can keep some of the Slammer Mills protected under his control. And he has right now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Lumber Mills under his control, guys. Even 6 now at the top right side. So he's gonna get so much money. He has no siege weapons, uh, but he has upgrades on these units. And he has also double leadership from Lords and Saruman. Warchen is available as well. Uh, but in order to break the wall from the good factions, you need to get either Rams or, you know, you need to get either Rams, uh, Ballistas or Explosive Mines on the field. You can even go for the ladders if you want to and put the units on top of the ball. <laughs> That's also nice because then, you know, the Rohirrim can't do anything about them, you know? Many, many pikemen are chasing down this Rohirrim. And I think in order to defend this attack, the Rohan player will definitely need the power points for the army of the dead. Luckily, he is a little bit more than one power point away from that. So he's gonna get there. The well is going down. One level from killing a well because of the combat experience from Saruman, but also generally killing wells in statues as well as sentry towers is giving you so much experience in battle for Middle Earth 1. Alright, now Isengard player is gonna capture this outpost and he's gonna go for the siege. But, he, but little he knows because, you know, John Wick is ready to pop, pop off guys, he's ready. He's gonna use the army of the dead very very soon on top of the enemy units and the leadership, the heroes, that doesn't matter anything for Army of the Dead. They're gonna one-shot everything they touch. 10 power points collected, ladies and gentlemen. Army of the Dead is available for John Wick, while Isengard's player is still over 11 power points away from his own Balrog summon. The reason is because he was going for the devastation, of course, but also the reason is... Oh, look at this, guys. Look at this fiesta. Army of the Dead killing all. Fireball is being used before Saruman goes down. The good thing for the Isengard faction is he's getting power points as he's losing units. Look how many power points he will get after losing Lords. Watch. You see, around half a power point only from Lords. You get around two power points from losing Saruman all alone. So eventually, from losing units 24-7, he's gonna get there. He's gonna get the Balrog summon and Rohan has to be ready for that. The only way you can be ready for that is you need to buy a lot of outposts. You have to get a lot of money in order to be able to buy the base back. Because Mergin knows how to finish off the entire castle from Rohan with the Balrog all alone. And the power of the good factions in the late game is definitely on point. Because evil factions in BFME 1 have no summons, right? They cannot summon anything but Balrog. So while the evil, while the good factions like Rohan, for example, can summon elves, can summon ants, can summon AOD. So you have way more summons with good factions, especially Gonzo. You have Rohirrim allies summon, you have Elven allies summon, you have Eagle allies summon, you have Army of the Dead. That means in the Super Late game, when everything is unlocked from the spellbook, I think the good factions are gonna come ahead. That's why Isengard's player now has to win this game as soon as possible. He was feeding so many power points for no reason, and he's also losing a lot of map control now. Uh, he is still over 6 power points away from his own Balrog summon, guys. That's a lot. And during all this time, Army of the Dead is reloading. He has now the power points he needs for Elvin Wood, for example. He can try to go for Anduril and recruit Aragorn and save for the Cloud Break right after. Um, so pretty strong right now, John Wick. Without any hero all game long. Alright. The Rohirrim matches are very nice. I would still love to see Theodin in this matchup because Theodin is gonna just make you deal 50% more damage for free. And once again, Isengard has no freezing rain. It means no way of nullifying the leadership. And that means also that you will have constantly, 24-7, the damage boost and the armor boost from Theodin's presence. 
Okay, he's reviving his heroes, of course. But he has a lot of money, but remember, he needs to invest so much money now again into making more and more units 24-7, you know? And also the top right outpost is going to be taken down. We see some level 10 or hit him on the field with full upgrades. Beside the horseman shields. He was never going for that, though. No, he was never going for that for some reason. He has now the money he needs to recruit, the, uh, to purchase this upgrade. That's going to be a huge upgrade for the Rohirrim. Again, that's going to make them so much more tanky against arrows. Which is not going to only be effective against level 3 furnaces and sentry towers, no. It's even impactful against lords and against combos. So it's very nice if you can purchase that, always go for that. Okay. I mean, maybe he's scared that uh, the Isengard's player might have the Balrog very, very soon. And he's not wrong, because now he's only 4 power points away from that, which is very easy to be done with for Isengard. And once again, very important to keep in mind, Isengard, but also Mortal Faction, are getting power points from losing units as well. Power points are rising, Devastation has been used once again, Isengard has lots of money as you can see. He has, he has enough money to build an army worthy of Mortal guys. Just like that. Uh, and the, uh, the pikemen with the with the upgrades here, with heavy armor, forge blades, and also the war jump buff are just being able to fight these elves, no big deal. This outpost here is gonna be under attack, but the Rohirrim arches are forced to retreat. Rohirrim arches, if we don't know, are very vulnerable against fire. So if you wanna deal with them, just make some combos, and they can never win the 1v1 situation. And look at this, guys. The trolley at the bottom right side is still remaining, because that's a, such a... Uh, such a bad position for a creep on this map. There is nothing to achieve around this side, so the players most of the time have no reason to creep this one. Right, he's gonna now commit against this outpost, very smart to get some peasants on the field. Peasants, one of the cheapest and one of the strongest counter units uh, to the pikemen. And once again, Mergen, the Isengard player, was never ever recruiting any war riders in this matchup, not once. And that's something I don't understand. Because that's a big map. And having some mobile units like Warc Riders is gonna give you the chance to go for harassment 24-7. This way you can keep up the pressure at the farms from your opponent. Because now John Wick, the Rohan player, is getting free money. He has the entire top side under his control. He has both the outposts, as you can see, with three farms each. So he's getting so much money now. That also means that even if you can now also kill the base with the Balrog, you will be able to rebuy that base because he has so much money. And by the way, before the Isengard player was able to get the first Balrog summon, uh, Isen, um, you know, Rohan player has now the second AOD summon ready, guys. That's impressive. He's now finally going for the Horseshoe upgrade, that makes sense, and army after that is gonna be used, as you can see. Commitment. Uh, Wizards are able to kill them. And by the way, if you don't know, the War of Power from Gandalf can kill them all at the same time, if they are grouped like this. Saruman is going down. But that's gonna give the power points now to the Isengard's play. He needed. He has now the Balrog summon ready. He can use that to kill the Rohan castle. But that's not gonna defeat Rohan because he, had, he has outposts under his control, guys. All right. Thanks for following on Twitch. Appreciate that so much. All right. The commitment. I mean, they are immune to damage. The only damage you can uh, you can use to kill them is either Aragorn. He was using the Balrog summon defensively. All right. I mean. That's not going to achieve too much for you. You will be able to one-shot this outpost, yes. But that's pretty much it. Breath Fire should be enough to kill this outpost entirely, just like that. And he has still time. He can always use the Wings. Wings has almost no cooldown in BFMU1, so you can keep flying with Balrog 24-7 pretty much. Isengard has still some money, but he has barely any units around, while Rohan has really strong units. Two battalions of Rohirrim with full upgrades now, and they are both level 10. They are really, 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 really strong guys. Trust me on that one. And yeah, Isengard has a great eco from the power points, from the spellbook. You have Devastation, you have Industry, you have Field of Fire, so you have a lot of tools to boost your money. But the problem is, once again, in the in the very late scheme, when everything is unlocked from the spellbook, the good factions are always coming ahead. Because the summons are just so much powerful. Uh, in compared to eco power. Eco power is gonna give you the, the sustain you need to rebuy the army you lose all the time. But the army summon, the reinforcement summon from the good factions like Rohan or Gonzo, is gonna make you uh, have much more units on the field than your opponent. Every couple of minutes you are able to summon ants, every couple of minutes you are able to summon elves. And that's an additional army power which you can't 
kind of it's kind of bad for the evil factions in BFME 1. I like the evil faction power points from the spellbook more in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King because they are also able to summon some additional units on the field and I think that's very necessary in very very late game. Lurz is back in the business now, level 5. Tarumon is also getting recruited once again. Isengard's player is stalling the game. He's trying his best to win this game, but it's gonna be a much, much easier set than done. That's a massive Rohan army, and that's the Cloudbreak. Cloudbreak is able to stun the enemy units. Look at this power with the ants now, guys. He's fully committing. The Balista is going down next. There is no way. The ants are pretty much immune to arrows when they have, when they have no fire upgrades. They're gonna, they're gonna stay there and tank forever. Smart move here from the Rohan player to use the ends first so they can face tank the towers. Commitment against the Tita. When you kill the Tita, he won't be able to buy anything anymore in the base until it's back up. Ballistas are gonna try their best to protect. The siege continues, the ends are going to war, and that's nostalgic, right? Because it's like Fangon Forest now moves to Isengard. <laughs> Alright, the Tita is going down just like that. He won't be able to finish off this base because once again the durability of the Isengard base is kinda insane. Like, look at the 6000 HP furnaces, and every single one of them is acting like a tower. So, quite hard to commit against. So, you need to attack it multiple times if you want to be able to finish it off completely. What you can always do is also Aragorn. Aragorn is one of the tankiest, if not the tankiest, hero in the game. With the Anduril Sword from the Spellbook, and with the Blade Master, Aragorn is the only hero that can withstand a Breath Fire from Balrog. There is not a single hero, and not a single unit in the game that can withstand this much damage. And trust me, you use Balrog, you use Breath Fire, you use Ignite and you use Breath Fire right after. Aragorn with the Anduril Sword and the Blade Master is gonna face tank, the, face tank this damage like a madman. Alright, Saruman is running for his life. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> there is no tower now to hide Saruman against the mighty ants, but they are gone now. And during all this time, Isengard's player is trying to fight for the map control, but he has no mobile units. The spike men are just very immobile in compared to the Rohirrim matches, of course. He has now many of these units on the field. And once again, the weakness of the spike men is fire, is arrows. That's why he's able to deal with them just like that in a couple of seconds. Alright, so he's gonna be trying to defend himself once again. But the army of the dead is gonna just kill the entire army very, very easily. Uh, Balrog summon is gonna be back up very, very soon. But the problem is... Uh, Balrog summon is ideally when you use it against a against a base, which is the only base from your opponent. Because the way the games in BFME 1 works is when you lose your castle and you have no outposts or no camps under your control, you are gonna automatically lose the game. But in this case, Rohan player has three outposts under his control. So even losing the main castle is not gonna make him lose the game. And he has so much map control and that's what I'm trying to say all the time. Map control in Battle for Middle Earth games is everything, guys. That's why you should never ever uh, stop focusing on the map control. Always have some units, ideally some mobile units like Pork Riders when you are playing Isengard, Nazgûs when you are playing with the Moro faction, and of course Rohirrim or Gondor Knights if you are playing with either Gonzo or Rohan, fighting for the farms, fighting to kill the enemy mills, because that's gonna make you get a lot of money, that even if you lose your castle, you will have to sustain your money in your economy, as Rohan player John Wick has, to rebuy everything. And that's only possible because he has such a great map control. Balrog summon offensively at the top right side. He will be able to one-shot this outpost just like that. But the problem is, that's it. That's it. All the army is gone. Saruman and Lord has been taken down once again from the army of the dead. The commitment now against the base. He will be able to kill this level 3 furnaces. You can't replace them. That means Isengard player is going to lose money. He's going to lose buildings. He won't be able to replace. The level 1 furnaces are not only way... Uh, way squishier, weaker in terms of armor stats and HP, but also they give you less money and they don't act like a tower. That means uh, Isengard base is gonna become much more vulnerable once the level 3 furnaces are down. There's only one, at, uh, one left at the left side, two left at the right side, that's it. That's it, guys. This outpost is gonna be taken down next. I mean, once again, sending the spikeman out is not gonna achieve too much because he can always run away from you, he can always disengage and hit and run all the time. And look at this. He's gonna use now the freezing rain, but again, Rohan player is playing without leadership all game long. He doesn't, you know, your rain is gonna be kinda, kinda useless because he has no Theodine, he has no Aragorn, he has no heroes. He was not recruiting any hero, by the way, in this game so far from the beginning until very late. 
lurch us back in the business and army after that yes we need to agree on one thing you know the 10 power points from the good faction and the 20 power points from the evil faction are just way too powerful in this game and after army after that it's kind of pointless because regardless how much leadership you have regardless how many units you have on the field especially if you have infantry units you cannot outrun army after that that's not possible so you're gonna lose everything every couple of minutes and they're reloading quite fast as well as you can see and I like the fact that Rohan is always keeping an eye on the map control, he's always trying to kill the enemy meals, he's always trying to keep his own farms protected. He has now all the power points unlocked from the spellbook as you can see. Aragorn is getting recruited as the king of men, king of Gonzo, with his Anduril sword guys. And Aragorn once again is the tankiest hero in the game. Theodin, the former king of Rohan is also on the field, to support the army finally with some leadership make them just much 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 stronger than they already are he's gonna have to end ally summon very soon as well Saruman has to run for his life maybe go for a risky warm tongue ability because warm tongue is gonna warm tongue is gonna give you the chance to actually make the enemy units fight for you so if you can land a great warm tongue you can actually take the control of multiple enemy units at once which is very effective trust me 2,500 resources collected for the Man of the West player. I mean, for the Rohan player, sorry. Uh, and that's a lot. I mean, it's not about the money he has. It's about the money generation he has right now with all these level 3 farms inside the base, outside of his base, with all the outputs he has under his control. Warm Tongue is being used, but he missed them all. He was not able to get any of these units under his control. Tarumon now has to run for his life. He's running through some pikemen. That, may, that might be a mistake. That beautiful Wizard Blast, actually. And very well done here from Merge. Nice micro keeping the Saruman protected. Nice one also getting in between the buildings. And look how much damage he's taking for free, guys. He's forced to retreat. Because Rohir matches are very vulnerable units. They are not tanky at all. Theorin has to be careful. He's level 3 already. Level 4 is going to unlock his glorious charge. And he's the former king of Rohan. is going to scream for death and glory. And he's going to make himself and also the Nervi allied Rohirrim and Rohirrim arches nearly unkillable. They're gonna become not only resistant to slows, but also they are almost resistant to any damage. Just like that. Army of the Dead is available once again for the for the Rohan player. You can use it right there, but I think that's gonna be that's gonna be kind of a mistake. You know when you wanna use AOD guys? And you have any follow-up, like he does now. You don't wanna use AOD if there is nothing else that can follow up. Now what's gonna happen is AOD, the Army of the Dead, is gonna face tank the arrows inside the base, and that's gonna make this Rohirrim Arches be able to kill everything. Mergin is gonna leave the game, and that's game, guys. Run against Isengard on the map Dune Harrow. That's a nice thing to see another map than Forts of Isen all the time. As soon, I will also upload some more gameplays from my side. Uh, I feel like I feel like you guys liked the one game I was uploading before a lot. Thank you guys so much for support. Thank you for watching. And if this was enjoyable for you guys, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. As always, stay beyond standards. I see you next time. Peace.